Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is out along with my actual review. This is the spoiler video where I'm going to be ruining things for those that haven't seen it. So if you haven't watched the film and you don't want things ruined, go check out my actual review. And then you can come back here afterwards and hear what I have to say. Or just push on because it's Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and you're a grown adult that doesn't care. Either way, we're starting. Just want to point out that I like this movie. I enjoyed it just as much as the first. Probably not more. About equal. About equal, I'd say equal footing. There are a few things I wanted to talk about though that I didn't get a chance to in the previous video, so here goes. First off, small appreciation for Ben Schwartz and the screenwriters for allowing him to throw in that Parks and Rec reference. It's in reference to Ben Schwartz's character Jean Raphael from Parks and Rec, one of the greatest side characters of all time. So I really enjoyed hearing that in the movie. Secondly, the first 20 or so minutes of this movie are really good. I was hoping it was gonna keep this momentum going. Unfortunately, the wedding stuff really derails things badly for about 20 minutes. And it just sucks because that whole section could have been taken out. I love the beginning where we're back on the mushroom planet and Dr. Robotnik's experimenting with a lot of different things, primarily how to make a good cup of coffee using only mushrooms. He fires up this mushroom style Goonies-esque contraption that goes around and around and ends with Sonic being impaled into spikes. It's a great scene. It looks fantastic. This whole movie looks really nice. And then we get a great introduction to the Echidna going through a ring portal. We hear a little bit about his rivalry with the owl race. They, they went all in on owls this time around. It's really a big backstory thing. And I do always enjoy when sequels find a way to shoehorn in their plot to the first film. So we find out Sonic was actually sent to Earth for a reason. It's because the Master Emerald is here and he has to protect it. We also learn that Knuckles has been searching for this puppy his whole life, and his entire species has been wiped out because of these stupid owls. I enjoyed the plot and how it interweaves with the first story. I also like that Knuckles and Robotnik team up in a plausible manner and how they kind of backstab each other as the movie goes on. It's all very well done. But then there's this wedding stuff that's so insane. Maddie's sister Rachel's getting married. And for some reason, this is an important plot point that we have to spend a good amount of time talking about. Tom's there, which helps, because I, I think Tom's delightful. I like his relationship with Sonic, the, the father figure that Sonic needs in his life. It's so hard to even process and put into words what takes place. Okay, they're at the wedding. Rachel's about to get the ring put on her finger by the love of her life, who is completely jacked. He makes me feel like the most pathetic man on the planet. Him and all of his buddies, by the way. There's a shirtless scene where I was just sitting in awe watching them thinking, so this is what it's like to, to be a man. And Tom realizes, oh God, the magic trick I did earlier, I took the wrong ring. It's a funny moment. He throws the ring, Sonic and Tails pour through the portal, barely surviving an avalanche, and then we find out that this was the plan all along by the general from the first film. He pops out of nowhere and says, we got him, tag him and bag him. Sonic and Tails go in a cage, while I'm confused as to what's going on. It turns out Rachel's fiance was an undercover cop the whole time, and this was all a ruse, a sting operation to get Sonic and Tails put away. Well, just Sonic. Tails is new. They didn't know about him. But still, what? What logic is this? So the government, who's been tracking the blue blur, decides the best way to get him cornered is to throw an elaborate wedding with Sonic's best friend's wife's sister in Hawaii where it would cost a fortune, by the way. We're then gonna have a plane fly overhead that says I love you. Like, they do so much. What is the budget for this team? What, why are they, why are they spending so much unnecessary money? You didn't need to get the plane. You didn't need to put the sign out there for her. Rachel's already all in. She's marrying a stallion of a man. Not only that, but to catfish this woman for months or years, how long's it been? How long has he been playing this game with her heart for? She's naturally furious. Uh, and this continues on. We then get Rachel rampaging through the wedding, destroying stuff. It's honestly really funny though. She pops the e-brake on the golf cart. It's slow motion blows up into some speakers as she walks away, chucking a, you know, a wine bottle. Hilarious. Why is it in a Sonic movie? After 10 or so minutes, I turned over to my daughter. I'm like, is this Sonic anymore? What are we watching here? There was a point where I had to go away and use the bathroom. And when I came back, Sonic and Tails were freed. 
I honestly don't know if they ever showed him get free because I feel like the movie really turned into the Rachel show for about 10 or so minutes there. We see them launch a security guard or a cop into the sky. He might have came down. I don't know how he's not dead. They also shoot at people. They injure many officers. I don't know why there's no repercussions for these women or Tom. Honestly, they may have killed a few people and got off scot-free. You could have removed that entire slice of film, lost absolutely nothing to the plot, and then you would have had a much more manageable hour and 40 minute film. Would have been perfect. As it stands, this was just a really funny aside that did not need to be here and shouldn't have been. The plot is so absurd. We have to talk about the final moments of the movie where Dr. Robotnik absorbs the Master Emerald becoming ultra powerful, he's got magneto abilities, he's pulling metal structures together, and he makes that giant bad guy boss thing from Sonic 2. I'm sure it has a name, Egg Destroyer, Egg Walker, I, the, I don't know what it's called. It looks cool though. Sonic and friends gotta go fast to stop him, and they do, but not fast enough, as Sonic and the family are crushed under the weight of this machine but not before the Chaos Emerald falls down and Sonic is able to get it, using the power of love, of course, because that's what we do in these movies. He goes Super Saiyan. It's not quite as dramatic as I made it. Honestly, it could have been more dramatic than what they made it. It is still cool though. My son was freaking loving it. He actually turned to me and the first thing he said is, I wonder if Hypersonic's gonna be in this. I just, there's no pleasing this kid. There's no pleasing him. Hypersonic, what are we doing anymore? Sonic takes out Robotnik who falls of course into a cloud of smoke. We don't see what happens. He disappears in case Jim Carrey decides he's not retired from acting and wants to come back for a third, which I'm guessing he will. Hopefully in a fat suit because Jim Carrey's talked about how he wants to play fat Robotnik. I think it would be hilarious. Give me that Tom Cruise Tropic Thunder style of bodysuit and you have a winner here. We then end with a cute baseball scene akin to the first movie. This time Knuckles just punches the baseball, almost takes off poor Tail's head, which would have been delightful to see. They then drive away right before Sonic realizes, oh, can't forget this, picks up the Master Emerald out of the cooler and then they go. Pretty, pretty funny. Good ending, very cute. We then get an end credit scene where we find out that 50 years in the past, a science experiment was made, and in this laboratory, we get the reveal of Shadow the Hedgehog. He's back, baby. This time in movie form. I hope he's got a motorcycle here. I hope he's brandishing that gun, or maybe double guns. He's definitely got the attitude, I can tell. He's got the black fur, he's got the scar on the eye, or whatever. He looks emo as all hell. Looks like a total bozo, and I'm ready for it. I am a little bit bewildered as to why this was 50 years in the past and who created him, but that's for the sequel to tell, and that's for the convolution to really start. Third movie is where they always just go completely off the rails or completely off the tails, if you must. All right, those are my spoiler thoughts on Sonic 2. Not a bad little movie, fun for the whole family. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Did anything blow your mind? Were you like, oh, I got that reference from the game. There was the sound from Green Hill Zone. Hey, he's doing his waiting animation where he taps his foot on the ground. There was a lot of good references. I appreciated that. Feel free to like the video if you enjoyed yourself. Subscribe if you haven't. I post tons of movie related content each and every week. Hit the notification bell, that little ding ding, so they show up in your feed. And hopefully you'll make like a ring and I'll see you around. Haha, <laughs> puns. Why you look at some of the other related videos and maybe think about joining me on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies or right here via the YouTube join button above, I'm gonna list off some other characters I'd like to see in the Sonic verse. Big the Cat, Amy with the sledgehammer, Cream, the bunny, the robot from Sonic Adventure 2. I don't remember his name, it's some letters and numbers. Rouge the bat, Bumblebee kid with the sneakers, alligator guy with the gold chain necklace. There's a lot of characters. Most of them are pretty stupid, but there's a lot of characters. Hopefully we just get, uh, hopefully we just get Shadow. Maybe Metal Sonic makes an appearance. That would be sweet. I like Metal Sonic. <laughs>